So some would accuse you of fanciful thinking. Some would accuse you of dreaming and not facing reality. And we would say good, good, because you can face reality. And we have no opposition to that. There is plenty of reality that is delicious. And you want to not only face it, but embrace it. You want to talk about it. You want to write about it. You want to milk it for everything that it is. In other words, don't stop looking at the good things that are around you. Just be a selective sifter so that you can tell the difference between promoting something that you want to continue to promote in your experience and promoting something that you don't want to promote just because it is so easily promotable. What is, is easy to focus upon, but that's not the genius of creating. The genius of creating is holding your mind on something that has not yet manifested and then watching it take shape in the form of your thought. So. You have a real head start, you know, because your inner being is already way out ahead of it. And that will be a big part of the theme that we will play with together, getting out ahead of it. And by that, we mean getting out ahead of what is in more and more moments in time. You know, those dear hearts, those dear ones that welcomed you into this time and space. Parents, um, nice, well-meaning people, mostly. <laughs> so your mother believed something. We won't go into why. She just believed it. And because she believed it, she talked about it a lot. And because she talked about it a lot, she kept it active in her vibration. So it was her point of attraction. And because it was her point of attraction, she manifested it and she manifested it. And then she talked about it because she knew it was coming. And when it came, there it was. So she talked about it because it made her feel very wise to have predicted it. And there it is. And you witnessed her talking about it and you witnessed her manifesting it. And so you believe it too, even if it's something you don't want, you still believe it because you saw someone perform the awareness that law of attraction creates what you think about you get what you think about whether you want it or not so so many people are so realistic and so busy facing reality that they are pretty sure that because they've seen it that then it must be true naturally and because it's true then it must be probable for all and we say Oh, that's the variable that most humans aren't aware of. It's only probable for those who have an active vibration about it. You see, that's the fun. That's the genius of mastering deliberate creation is that you don't have to talk about it just because others do. And you don't have to think about it just because others do. And you don't have to believe it just because someone is living it. You get to choose all of those things. You get to choose what you believe. You get to choose what you make true. You get to choose what you make true. You are already choosing what you make true. And so because you create your own reality, oh, and because you have an inner being who is so oh, beneficial to you and so aware of who you are and so rooting for you to have the things that this life has shown you that you want. You have a tremendous advantage because this is a really important thing to get hold of. One who is connected to this stream of who you really are. One who's in vibrational sync, in alignment with the energy of your source, that ever expanding energy, expanding because of the choices that you are making. One who is in alignment with that is more powerful than millions who are not. There is no comparison between the point of attraction that your inner being holds and is and that of most humans because your inner being does not split energy. Your inner being doesn't say, well, they want this, but they think about that. Your inner being simply says they want this and therefore it is. Therefore it is. So when we say to you, ask and it is given we're not kidding even a little bit when your life causes you to ask there is a vibrational response 
to that asking that is immediate and magnificent. You just got to find a way of tuning to the frequency of that. And we know it's a little tricky because your life has caused you to know what you don't want. In fact, that's the whole reason you're asking for this. So it is logical that what you don't want would be a stronger, more active vibration. After all, it's something that you're witnessing. It's something that you're experiencing. It's something that people are talking about. We get it while it feels bigger, but it isn't. We get it while it feels more real, but it isn't. We get it while it feels more powerful to you, but it is not. It is flimsy and weak and nothing more than the bouncing off place to who you really are and where you're really going. So you've got choices all day, every day, in every moment of every day, in every waking moment, you have the choice of focusing in the direction of what you have manifested in your vortex or what is manifested around you in the physical. And we got to say to you, what's manifested in the physical thoughts that have turned to things, that's old news. That's like gum that you've chewed the flavor out of. It isn't really what you want to give your attention to. It isn't where you're going. It's where you have been. It's where maybe you might think that you are. But when you take the whole of who you are, when you see the whole of who you are, you are way more than what's manifested so far. In fact, you are so much more than what you think has manifested so far that your inner being spends no time focused upon what you think you are. Your inner being only focuses upon who your inner being knows you to be and the component of what you're asking for, the component of your continuing fresh new desires is the largest part of all of that. We've just described to you the evolution of all species. We've just described to you what puts the eternalness in eternity. We've just described to you who you are as a creator. You just have some choices to make. And this was a wonderful opportunity while we were all together chewing with each other. You get to decide whether you are a creator by default, which means you're observing and regurgitating and achieving a point of attraction just based upon what you're observing with very little attention to how it feels when you observe it, or whether you are a creator, a deliberate creator, a deliberate creator. So step one happens without you knowing it does because the contrast that surrounds you causes you to ask, 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 ask. Step one. Step two is, as we just described, when you ask your inner being and all those cohorts that hang around there, cadre of pure positive energy, you want to call it God, we want to call it source, you want to call it God, we want to call it inner being. You can call it whatever you want, but it is source energy and it is all over what you care about. Step two, you ask and it has been given. It is given in the moment of the asking. Step three, that's where you get more intentional. That's where you choose thoughts that match what you want rather than thoughts that justify why you don't want what you don't want. Pretty interesting how you've come to that. We think your mother trained you away from your inner being. We think that sometimes you were led to believe that you had to plead a needy case, that you had to plead a justifying case, that you had to defend, that you had to fight for the scraps of well-being. You picked that up along your physical trail. We promise it is not what you knew when you came into this body and it's not what the larger part of you knows because there is no shortage consciousness in non-physical. That's something humans make up and fight with each other about. You pretend that there isn't enough of something so that if somebody gets something that you want, then you decide that you don't like them for getting it. When what you really want to do is to be thrilled that they are offering the example of what it's like to live something that you might want. So step one is you ask, step two is source answers, and step three is you find a way to find vibrational alignment with what you want rather than defending what you don't want. It's what we call the receiving mode. It's what the art of allowing is. It's allowing into your experience, not just right now in this red hot minute, but allowing into your experience a steady habit of expecting good things to come to you. 
because things are always working out for you you often cannot stand back in broad enough view to understand how much well-being is all queued up on your behalf and because you're inconsistent in the way you let it flow into your experience you as humans have made up all kinds of ridiculous rules about why sometimes it gets in and why sometimes it doesn't why the blessings flow to some and why the blessings don't flow to others and we want to say to you that as well-meaning as people are that's nuts that's not how it works there is not some arbitrator who is deciding to dole out the good stuff and holding you accountable for who gets the good stuff and who doesn't it is a vibrational experience it is a you syncing up with the goodness that is you it is you finding vibrational harmony with your own desire it really is as simple as that there's a steady stream of well-being flowing to you at all times it's raining down all around you and you get to decide how open and receptive to that pure positive energy you are or how resistant you are which means you get to decide whether you are worthy enough to let it in or you get to make up stuff that helps you to convince yourself that you are not worthy but we promise you every bit of that you picked up along your physical trail from somebody else that picked it up along their physical trail from somebody else who for whatever reason figured out a way to pinch off the well-being and then acted as a demonstrator of no well-being and then made up stories to scare you about your own well-being most people want to control the environment around them which includes you and so there are all kinds of crazy things that are told to you to make you conform so that they can observe more of what they seem to need to observe in order to feel good they will say to you if you are speaking as we are or even to us they will say you teach selfishness and we say yes we do because if you are not aware of self and if you are not selfish enough to sync up with the true self that is you if you are not selfish enough to be the true self the total self the whole self that is you then you got some resistance going on there's split energy in you and you don't feel that good that's what negative emotion is negative emotion every single time is you asking for something with the source energy part of you and denying yourself of it with the physical part of you it's you facing a reality of some sort that you don't want and speaking of it in order to convince someone that somebody should do something so that you can get more of what you want that we don't disagree with somebody should do something and that somebody that should or the only one who can is you you are the only one who can come into vibrational alignment with your own inner being we know it's nice when there are lovelies around you who stand on their head you think it's nice to please you but in the long run it doesn't really help you because they train you away from your own ability to focus yourself into the alignment that you want in other words if someone's always behaving in a way and all you have to do is observe them then you get pretty lazy in your observation and when you're lazy in your observation then you are most often full of vibrational resistance that is holding apart from you things that you want and then you make up stories about why that is so